Look at that right there. Ice fishing does not get any better than this right here. These fish are just so mean, so fast, they bite so hard. What is going on guys? Let me turn you around so you can see me a little bit better. Today we are back with hopefully what is gonna be another great video. Where are we today? Today we're in one of my absolute favorite fishing destinations, targeting one of my absolute favorite fish to target year round. And uh, we're up Grand Lakes up here and we are chasing and uh, hopefully catching the elusive lake trout. The most fun fish to catch, almost, I mean, I, I do a ton of it up here in the summer. We rarely get enough ice to come out here in uh, the winter and get to actually some halfway decent lake trout spots. And uh, I will say this right now, if you were gonna come up here, incredible ice safety this ice is always changing always shifting there's a ton of current it doesn't really lock into anything so it's constantly moving around snapping and popping and uh, pretty much every day you got to check ice no matter where you go and uh, it took us a while to get out it's uh, I'm flying solo today but uh, it took me a while to get out here due to checking ice and uh, we actually have some good safe fishable ice which is a good thing and uh, I think we're in the right spot. Obviously, lake trout are kind of a deep water fish, and uh, we'll talk all about kind of the spots around baits and everything like that, but I just want to make sure we're in the right depth. And it is incredible to see that much ice out here. I mean, that is probably 12 inches or more, but I've probably been over spots that I checked that were six, seven. I mean, just a lot of different stuff going on, but gotta grab a graph quick, make sure we're in the right depth. All right, we are in 105 feet of water, which is gonna probably do it for this morning. Normally we catch these fish a little bit shallower like in this. 80 to 100 feet in the morning and kind of push out as the day goes on, but I think this is going to do it. So we're going to set the shack up. It's only about 25 below out this morning and uh, we're going to set the shack up. Hopefully we're going to jig all of our fish today and uh, hopefully we don't have to move too far, but I'm incredibly excited. I mean, the scenery up here is just incredible. You probably can't really tell yet, but just an amazing destination to come and fish. So stay tuned. We got to get the shack set up, get rolling, and uh, we'll see you inside once the heater gets on. All right, what are we using today? We're using one of my favorite lake trout presentations. And uh, that is big white soft plastic. Here's a Kalen's, um, I think this is called the jerk minnow. Yeah, it's the full size jerk minnow. I actually use this fair amount for walleyes and it's kind of a bigger presentation for walleyes, but um, definitely, and lake trout love white. And jig head wise, we're using the Kalen's Ultimate S jig head in a two ouncer here. And uh, we might go down in that size. Uh, the reason you gotta go so heavy a lot of times is to fight current. There's a ton of current out here in the Great Lakes and it's always ripping some direction, right? Uh, if that current slacked out and I can get away with a little bit less weight, I kind of get a little bit more glide off that thing, um, I will. But a lot of times when you're fishing deeper depths like this, you need something like two plus ounces. The other presentation we use is like two or three ounce spoons and uh, we might kind of switch it up as the day goes on or whatever. Then I just got a little stinger hook tied onto the back of that there. I don't know how well you can even see that really, but big white plastics, heavy jig head, big strong hook. Very key for jigging these bigger fish in deeper water. Almost like a saltwater jig setup is probably more what you need. And uh, rod and reel combo, not your average stuff. This is a 46 inch heavy, and this is the Siscoet by Elliott Rods. It's their beefy lake chart rod. They also make one in a casting. This is the spinning one. And a key to this is a rod that loads up a lot for when these fish start really head shaking. And uh, obviously you need a stiff rod to fish a two or three ounce jig um, on the ice rod. Then the Pissy Fun Carbon X 2000, bigger reel, 15 pound braid down to a 15 pound floral leader. You definitely need a, a reel with a good drag and uh, a line pickup like this one here. So we're gonna get inside. Hopefully the heater's cranked up, things are warming up and uh, we'll see you there. All right, well, it only took most of the morning, but we're officially set up and we're doing our first drop. 
And uh, basically what we're going to be doing with the rod is not really a lot until we start seeing a fish. I mean, I'll kind of pump it around and move it, but uh, for the most part, what I'm doing is I'm going to get it down there probably 10, 15 feet off bottom. And uh, I'm just going to kind of bounce that rod and, you know, basically see what I see. And what I want to see is obviously a big red mark just flying up, right? And in that scenario, basically this is like my attracting deal. This is how, you know, what I do when there's just, is there... Oh my gosh, no way. There's already a fish kind of sort of chasing. But anyways, yeah, when I get one to chase, I'll do this. He kind of backed off, so I'll drop kind of back down into the zone here. And this is the funnest part about lake trout. It's just an incredibly visual way to fish, right? They absolutely love biting it on these kind of... Oh, yeah, here comes... Might be a white fish, though. Might not even... They love biting it when you're just cranking it up, right? So a lot of times what I'm doing is I'm trying to attract a fish. I'm just kind of doing these pumps, right? And then as a fish starts kind of keying in on it and shooting up at me, that's when you start that race away like this. And a lot of times those fish will just load that rod up or they'll slack line it. And uh, they're just a crazy fish to jig in general because they'll just come up and slack line it out of nowhere. You won't even mark them. They'll just come flying in. But for the most part, what I'm going to do is sit here and pump this probably you know, 10 or 15 feet up off bottom and uh, give those fish a real, you know, object to key in on. Then once they get under me, that's when I start that whole chase progression. Oh, here we go. Got him, right there. <laughs> There we go, and man is that fun. Not gonna be a giant one here. Doesn't really matter how, uh, let me see if I can get this camera turned on here. It doesn't really matter how big they are. They are just so much fun to fish for. Hopefully we still got them. Trying to get some cool underwater shots today. I don't know if it's gonna happen for us, but <laughs> we might lose a whole bunch of fish in the process, but so cool, man, sitting there. All of a sudden you see that mark just flicker, start pulling it away from them, and boom, fish comes up and just rails on it. I mean, that's as cool as it gets. And you can just start to see that guy down there now. Pretty cool shot though, I guess. And uh, definitely target species, not a super big one here. Hopefully he doesn't tangle on my deuce sir. I think we're gonna get him right up the hole here. He's not gonna give us too many problems. There we go. Nice fish right there. We'll definitely catch bigger ones than this today. But hey, if we're just getting rolling, can't complain too much. And look at this hook. That's how you want to hook a 30 pounder. Just choke it right through the top of the mouth. He's doing the little lake trout burp right there. There we go. And he's actually tagged. This is kind of cool. <laughs> and it looks like a brand new tag. Most of the tags, I don't know how you guys can see that. Most of the tagged fish that I catch are, are way larger than this. And the tags are so old and like moldy that it's tough to read the numbers, but G2462, I guarantee that guy was stocked relatively close from here because that tag is not very old. I'll look back on the camera footage and uh, report it to the old DNR, but I actually catch a lot of tag lakers in this area, uh, mostly in the summer, obviously, and mostly big ones. And um, it's kind of cool. I mean, lakers are definitely a fish where I do not ever keep a lot of them. Sometimes if I have one that's not doing well, a smaller one, I'll keep it um, and smoke it or something like that. But some of those smaller ones are actually pretty good to eat. But they're definitely a fish that is just too cool to, I feel like, to just keep a whole bunch of them. And the limits are pretty low, uh, which is good. But, uh, man, they're just too fun to catch. And we're going to drop right back down. And uh, hopefully a big wave of fish starts coming through. Got him. Right there. Hooked up. Might be a little bit better one. We got some little bit better head shakes here. Some start rushing up the graph. Pulled it away from an immediate bite. Where you at, buddy? I think we might have a halfway legit one here. Not gonna be a giant as he hasn't gone screaming yet. Gotta get my 30 feet of transducer out of the hole here. Oh, 
I still got him. Where you at, buddy? I think I got a good stick on him. Oh yeah, not too bad of a trout here. Are you going to play nice, buddy, and just come right up the hole? Oh no. Come on. <laughs> there we go. A little bit better fish right there. The old fat right there. Look at the belly on them. There's several different kinds of lake trout. And uh, this is a fattier one here. We can just pop you right off quick. Yeah, that trailer hook didn't even get them. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful lake trout right there. Just uh, actually moved out a little bit deeper. And uh, set up as I kind of went a while without really seeing anything. And there we go. Beauty of a lake trout right there. And man, they are just unbelievably fun to jig. As far as a species of fish to target in the middle of winter, unbelievable. Super aggressive and uh, just a ton of fun. Let's let that guy go and uh, let's do it again. See you later, dude. Oh, spraying water everywhere. Get down the hole, buddy. There he goes. There he goes. Get in the same. I got a lake trout on, Dan. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll throw you. I'll throw you on speaker for a second here. All right, on the phone we got a fish on here. It actually feels like not too bad of one. The old on the phone fish. Fishing slow. Make a phone call. It feels like a decent fish here. He absolutely charged up the graph too. Man. Sitting in 170 feet of water right here. I'm trying to pull the deucer out. They don't get all tangled up here. Here we go. Got a ton of deucer out just so that current grabs it. And it'll kind of pull it um, in the direction the current's going so I can see my bait here. It's a ton of current out here. And I actually went up to a, a two ounce a two ounce jig here. This feels like it's probably gonna be one of the nicer fish of the day here. Where are you at, buddy? Big head shakes right now. We'll see when it gets close here. I got too much slush in my hole to see down if I can see him yet. Oh yeah, it's not too bad a one. Definitely the nicest fish of the day here. Oh, he's a nice one actually. Come here, buddy. Come here, we got you right here. Up the hole, always oh, doing the old trout walk right at the hole here. Oh no. Come on, buddy. We don't want to lose you. Oh. All right, we got him, we got him. Oh no, he backed out of the hole. He backed out of the hole. I think we got a good stick on him here. Oh, here he is, he's just right there. Got to get them up the hole here. Man, they are so wily right at the hole like this. Burping up the big lake trout bubble. All right, we got him. Oh, he's going to make one more little run here. There we go. <laughs> That's a nice lake trout right there. Probably about a 33 incher. Going to get him unhooked quick. Look at that. That is too much fun. That is the most fun thing you can do through the ice in the middle of winter right there. Big, thick, stocky one. Let's let that guy go. Too cool. Back for more. There's actually another fish with that one. There he goes. Too cool. Well, it is uh, been an hour or so now and uh, sun is up a little higher. Maybe it's been longer than an hour. Uh, a couple of fish going, but it definitely slowed down and uh, I think we're going to move out deeper. We're going to try some of that uh 150 to like 190 foot stuff and um, we might even try a different spot i haven't decided yet but we definitely got to go a little bit deeper i think and uh we'll see what happens there but we got to do the old-fashioned tear down pack up just to move you know however far we're gonna go but um gotta work to catch fish so we'll see when we get there Yeah. 
at 170. I think that's gonna do her. I got a fish. I got a laker. <laughs> oh, you want to be on video, Mitchell? All right. Hang on. I'm, you're on speaker. Tell the folks why you're not out here. I'm hooked up. Mitchell says it's too damn cold out to be fishing today. Just a weak human being. Oh, I'm reeling him up. He, he was only about 170 feet down. Starting to get some goofy head shakes here. All right, he's... Oh, I can see him. He's about 40 feet down, Mitchell. Yeah, yeah. Stay with he's me. 30 pounder or what? Nah, I, I, he's, he's not gonna be quite 30 pounds. <laughs> All right, I got leader. He's puking up a bunch of stuff. There we go. <laughs> Not a big one, but a fun one. Probably about a 22 incher here. And he was not getting off. I absolutely drilled him on that big Kalen Ultimate S jig head, the two ounce. Man, he is all wily. <laughs> there we go. No matter what size these things are, they're a blast. Let's get them go. All right, see you later, dude. sudden that one just rifled up. Big head shakes. Whoa, he's getting real squirrely. Let's see, buddy. I'm at leader now. Oh, yeah. It's a nice fish for sure. There we go. <laughs> there we go. That's a nice lake trout right there. Absolutely crushed that thing, and man, he was not getting off. Having a good hook is everything. This isn't like come out with tackle you'd use for fishing for pretty much anything else besides just really big fish. There we go. There's a chunk right there. Some guys with like a broken down snowmobile right in front of me. I was gonna go help them, but they got a buddy hauling the other snowmobile off now. There we go. Beautiful laker. He's bleeding a little bit, but he's gonna be just fine. Man, that is just too much fun right there. Let him go. See you later, buddy. Back to the depths he goes. All right, let's talk about presentations real quick. Um, the stuff that I'm using is pretty simple, pretty standard lake trout stuff. The one that I'm fishing the most today, I've switched weights and the heads a little bit a couple times depending on current, but is the, this is a Kalen's Jerk Minnow, and this is in white. It's kind of a bigger, it's almost, well, it is a fluke bodied bait, and that pearl white. I'm pretty sure that everybody at Lake, Fish, lake Trout Fishes, most places, um, loves and has great success on white. But as you kind of pop this thing, um, it, it kind of swims a big circle, and, uh, I don't know if it's as much as the action or just something white that looks like a smelt or something, uh, but I catch a ton of Lakers on this in the, in the spring, summer, fall, and through the ice. Your jig head, this is the Kalen's Ultimate S Jig, but uh, basically you want heavy head, you don't want a hook that's like so enormous it's gonna look ridiculous on here. And uh, this is in the two ounce, but you want a very, very, very strong hook. And this hook almost has no flex to it. And the main thing is for holding a big fish and uh, you know for setting the hook very hard in very deep water on a fish that can pull very hard potentially. And a lot of the fish we're catching today, yeah, they're a couple pounds to five pounds and some bigger obviously. Uh, but on Lake Superior, you could tie into a 35 pound fish pretty much. It could just happen, right? And you do not want 
want to lose that fish because a hook bent out. And you're just setting the hook very hard and fighting them very aggressively. So, and if the bait is long enough, this one probably doesn't need it, but um, you could tie in a stinger hook, and this is just 20 pound fluorocarbon from here to here. And uh, yeah, that's kind of my main stay presentation and while the while i'm kind of working the bait you know i'm not seeing fish i'll just kind of pop it up off bottom you know three four feet off bottom and uh, just swimming along and then the second i start seeing fish i start ripping it away from gauging their aggression and uh, kind of go from there a lot of times you end up doing a cat and mouse where you drop down to them scream it up drop down to them they don't chase go back down to bottom pump it a few times chase it away it's a very fun very interactive game on the sonar and uh basically these these two baits will work the same the other bait which i have a lot of success on is bigger spoons and this is a two ounce Ackley Castmaster. It's a Magna Monster Spoon, and uh, they don't come with this little tints on the back. You could I tie that on because I don't run any live bait. Um, I know a lot of guys do run live bait or cut bait, dead bait for lake trout. Um, I don't think you need it because it's just so fast and aggressive. Um, but I'm sure sometimes you know it can help. But um, yeah, that's the two ounce. They make this in a one ounce, a two ounce, and a three ounce, and I'll kind of switch between those depending on how much current there is. If it seems like uh, the spoon is the way to go, these also cut current very well. There's not a lot here to grab so that you could fish very deep in heavy current with a three or two ounce cast master and catch fish, right? And uh, yeah, that's kind of the setup. It's not very complicated stuff. It's more of just being around the fish and then cat and mouse working them once you see them. This isn't the kind of fishing where like, you know, like let's say there's a fish on the graph. You know, he comes up to you and you do like one of these little numbers right here. This is like when you have a fish come up to you, you want to be reeling like this and pulling that bait constantly away from the fish, right? It's a very much a game of trying to get those fish to chase. Some of, they'll bite, some of them will bite in the fall, some of them will bite it as you're jigging it, and you won't even mark them. But most of them, I would say, most of the Lakers you catch, you know, you're working that fish, you see them come up on the graph, and you start reeling away like this and kind of doing the short hops on the rod, and then they either just totally slack line it, or they'll just, you'll feel that rod start to load, then obviously the big hook set. Look at that right there. He ate it right off bottom. And it feels like a good one. <laughs> I was just sitting down to do a, I was gonna do a talking segment on, on uh, this kind of spots we're fishing here. And man, that fish, I sat down to do it. That fish shot up and this is a nice fish. Oh man, look at that rod just loaded up. Definitely a nicer, oh yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> kind of crazy good luck is that? Would have been crazy if I started talking and then got this one halfway through, but man, this is gonna be a nice fish. Sometimes it just works out. It's actually warmed up a little bit. There's no wind out here today, so even though it's only like probably five or six degrees out, it feels really nice out. Man, this guy's getting just all squirrely right here at the hole. I do not have leader yet. Oh, <laughs> too much fun. I mean, I, I know I just keep saying it over and over, but it's just really as fun as it gets. Got drag going, can't gain any line right now. There's a little bit. This guy is gonna go ballistic at the hole. Yeah, I'm not even the leader yet, and I'm having a tough time getting it. There he goes. <laughs> oh my gosh. If you have not experienced this before, I would highly recommend doing some research or going out with a guide or something like that, somewhere where you can target Lakers, because just unbelievable through the ice. Actually, unbelievable any time of year. Oh, I really do not want to lose this fish. I feel like I stuck him pretty good. Man, I'm not even the leader yet. That's the crazy part. I wish I had a different camera angle. This camera lens is so zoomed in because I was going to do a talking point. All right, I got leader, so he's probably about 15 feet down. This is where it gets dicey when you just can't get him up the hole. Oh yeah, it's a nice fish. It's a real nice fish. Oh yeah, oh yeah, he's in the hole. Oh no, no. 
All right, we got him, I think. Oh, no. Oh, I really need somebody with me. Oh, he's right here. Got him. <laughs> Look at that fish right there, man. One of those bites, whole day is worth it right there. Let me get this guy popped off quick. Oh, man. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. Look at that trout. <laughs> that is what I'm talking about right there. Ice fishing does not get any better than this right here. These fish are just so mean, so fast. They fight so hard and very active and aggressive in the winter. Too much fun right there. Wow, I'm gonna snap a quick selfie pic and uh, we'll get them back. She's gonna be in good shape. Oh yeah. Back to the depths. Man, it's as good as it gets right there. Unbelievable, unbelievable good time. Wow, well wasn't that just incredibly lucky, huh? We turned the big camera on, went to start talking about some location and stuff like that, and big fish just bites. It never works out like that, ever. Nothing ever works out easy when you're trying to film ice fishing videos. But basically the kind of spots we're looking for, and it'll change kind of no matter what, you know, where you're targeting lake trout. If you're fishing inland stuff, you know, it might be 40 to 80 feet, you know, on a lake that gets 120. Um, in the Great Lakes, it, especially in the area that I fish, it's a lot of fish in this 100 to like 200 plus depth ranges in the winter. And that same thing goes for in the summer. Um, but basically, how do you, you know, how do you decipher a massive lake like this through an eight inch hole? Um, well, I've probably moved five times today, but a lot of times if you have this huge flat, right? And uh, basically a lot of times I'll look for any kind of extension that goes out towards the deepest water. And uh, basically what we're sitting on right here is a very large shelf that comes off out into deep water and there's one little knob right here and then the channel rips right around it. So there's a lot of heavy current right here and that's just kind of flows life into the spot. There's constantly like white fish, herring and all sorts of other uh, smaller fish down here that I'm not fishing for. But um, anytime you have a main channel that you know is very deep water butting up to a large piece of structure, it's generally gonna have some potential for lake trout. And then basically what you start doing then is you know maybe you set up here for an hour if you don't mark and fish or catch and fish, you move, you know, X hundred yards, 100 yards, 100 yards until you kind of land on that area where those fish are naturally coming through a lot more, right? Um, I've done this a few times, so I have some more waypoints out here and I have a million waypoints out here from the, in the summer. But basically lake trout, you're looking for big time structure close to very, very deep water. All right there, man, that was a soft little bite. We got them. Man, every time I turn this big camera on and go to film something, I hook up. <laughs> that and they're just really, really coming through here. Oh, I gotta get the producer out. I don't think it's a freak nasty big one, but doesn't feel too shabby. Come on, buddy. Man, just unbelievable. Now it's actually super nice out. Now you could be out here hole hopping and having a good time instead of sitting in the shack. Where you at? No leader yet. Sitting in 175 right here. I've moved a whole bunch of times today. Different pieces of structure, kind of in and out of pieces of structure where I'm finding fish. It's got to be getting close. It feels like an eternity you fight them for because they're in such deep water. And you can only really go so fast. All right, here he is. I don't think it's gonna be too shabby. Oh yeah, not very big. He's actually hooked right in the chin though. we will give you a quick look and let him go. He popped off quick there, buddy. So squiggly and squirrely. There we go. There we go. Much smaller than the last one. We'll let him go quick. There he goes. Back down. Hmm. Got him right there. Feels not too shabby. Oh man, is that fun. <laughs> I 
Never gets old. It's gonna be a little better than the last one. Man, just too much fun. Look at that rod. This rod just loads so deep into it, it's perfect. You get these big head shakes out of these fish. And uh, if you're fishing with a rod that's just all stiffness, what's gonna happen is you're gonna lose a lot of fish when those fish start doing these big head shakes. Pull my thing here. Oh. Where you at, buddy? We got 20 feet a liter, so once we hit that, we're getting close here. Man. Oh, I can see him down there. He's a nice fish. Oh, too cool. I got to get an underwater camera going. There we go. <laughs> oh, come here, buddy. That trailer hook's just looking like it's going to sting me. <laughs> got him. And look at that big jig hook. We could have free lined that fish and he was not going to come off. There we go. Another gorgeous laker right there. All fun. Man, just too cool. One of my absolute favorite things to do come up here and fish lakers we do a ton of it in the summer we filmed a ton of videos catching a ton of them and uh, the ice fishing for these fish when you can do it safely just an absolute blast look at that guy those fish are just built to eat and to fly around in deep water right there too cool so let them go see you later buddy back to the bottom in 170 too awesome <laughs> Oh, all right. Well, that is going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys liked this one. It was a ton of fun to make. It is uh, late afternoon, early evening now, and I'm going to get off the ice because you do not want to be out here probably in the dark. It's probably too dangerous, and uh, you don't want to do it. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Lake Charger is an absolute blast. We'll do a bunch more of it. And uh, the reason we haven't done it yet is because there just has not been ice um, out here for the most part. But this big, massive cold snap we've had the last couple weeks, uh, created some ice. If you are going to come out here and do this, be extremely, extremely careful. I cannot stress that enough. Um, this is the worst ice you'll probably ever fish. It's, it's shifting, it's moving, there's current, there's wind. It's just, uh, you got to be very, very careful out here. So, just want to put that out there. But I appreciate you guys watching. If you're not yet, please subscribe. Stay tuned for more content. We'll definitely be doing some more Laker stuff in the future. We'll see you guys next time.